Okay, so today we're going to look at the ETC Studio HD Daylight Leco fixture and we're going to pair it with Luminaire. So let's just jump right into the menu. Okay, so here is the back of the Daylight HD ETC Leco and you'll notice that right now I'm in advanced mode, hue, saturation, intensity, regulated output, and standard. If we go to the enter button, now you'll see my DMX start address is here, it happens to be 430. I could hit enter and change that. But if I come down to quick setups, you'll notice that I have a variety of setups that I could just pick at this point. But in terms of luminaire and using this, this light to its full potential, I don't recommend any of these settings. So let's go back come down to advanced settings and hit enter. Now in advanced settings, if I come up to my DMX settings settings, and then hit enter, uh, and then I scroll down to DMX profile, this is really the key to configuring this light for luminaire. And so now I'm going to come down to where it says hue saturation intensity and hit enter. And now it'll scroll through my different options. And uh, there's studio, there's a direct, uh, hue saturation intensities, but your best setting on this light, believe it or not, is an RGB setting, uh, how Luminaire deals with this light. You'll be able to get all your color and you'll be able to get a proper white light out of it. And then uh, your strobe is either on or off. I almost never use a strobe. Um, and then it's a data loss issue where if you lose the DMX signal, what happens to the light? Does it turn off? Does it stay on? Uh, plus seven's generally off unless you're doing uh, a, a great deal of, of tinting. Uh, but in this mode, you'll see you won't necessarily have to use the ETC plus seven. And then fan mode is in auto because that will protect the LEDs from overheating. So let's come back out. And now let's go down to LED settings and hit enter. And here, here the output is regulated. And you do have some options um, on this. You can go boost, which is uh, output, but you're not protecting your LEDs. And then you're protecting your, your LEDs from overheating. And then it's regulated. So you could get a lot more sort of output I guess you'd say from regulated because it's allowing for a full output but as soon as you start to overheat then the fan will kick on to cool them. I recommend a regulated output. Uh, it might uh, I hope uh, your fixture live a little longer since they are LEDs and potentially disposable. Okay and then we come down to curve, a standard curve. You could do a linear curve, you could do an incandescent curve. Uh, let's just go through couple options, a quick curve. I tend to do a standard curve unless I'm uh, matching it to to Lico's, to uh, incandescent Lico's. Now your output frequency is fairly critical for video because uh, you don't want any strobing, especially as you dim it down. So output frequency is typically for me as high as I can get it and so I'm sitting at 1200. That's the highest it'll go here. A redshift is an ETC technology uh, to get proper reds, uh, turn that off. It turns on more DMX channels that you don't necessarily need. And then importantly, um, it's good to be with this white point or whatever your base color is. And for me, these days, it's almost always 5600, but it has a variety of presets. I just look at them 56. And now I'll back menu. So that is it for configuring this light in the menus. And you'll notice that it's an RGB regulated standard output and it's only using three DMX channels. Okay, so we've looked at the internal settings uh, in the menu for the ETC Studio Daylight HD Leco. But now we're going to pair it with Luminaire. So Let's go in and, and uh, open Luminaire and uh, go ahead and configure it. Okay, so now we're in, uh, on an iPad. We're going to look at opening Luminaire and we're going to add that 
Daylight HD fixture from ETC. We open a project that had some rainbows in it. That's what's lighting me. But let's just go ahead and tap on plus. And then we're going to say DMX fixture. We're going to select a profile and oh, come down not too far to find ETC, electronic theater controls. We're going to tap on source for LED. We're given two choices here on their LED. So we're actually going to pick an RGB. And I happen to know that this fixture is at 430. We saw that when we were looking at the screen. And saying done. Here is the fixture. Now you'll notice that Luminaire populates four faders. Um, so let's just go backwards here and then we'll spend more time on the color fader that's here. But the, four, the fourth fader is fan control. I turn the fan control off. That's unregulated. I'm letting the light with its own thermostat control how much fan and how much cooling it will do. So I'm not using a DMX control for the fan control. So that's unused. The strobe I'm not using either. And the unused um, fader is here, and that's for anything else you want to assign to this, to this fader. So at this point, honestly, what you could do is come in and delete, hold down and delete, and then hold down on unused, it pops a menu, I hit delete. So now you look, if you see here on the right, my source for LED is actually just one fader. It's the one fader color. So it's actually act, acting as an RGB, AW, and a master intensity. So um, it's actually simplified this light quite a bit. But because what Luminaire does is when you do bring this light up, it fades it towards, you've got these two circles at the top, it actually fades it towards, uh, as it fades up, it fades it toward the circle on the right, and as you fade it down, it fades down toward the circle on the left. But what we're going to do is we're going to fade it up toward, if that's up, then the right circle is what comes into play, and the color and the value of that right circle. Now, in Luminaire, with this fixture, what's great about this fixture is that if your RGB values are 255 across the board, you're going to find a true white, and in this case, it's a daylight white, and I don't see any green shift or any magenta shift, and I don't see anything off more than 100 degrees Kelvin in terms of 5500 Kelvin being called a white light on this light. It's really pretty stunning. I like this fixture a lot because it's sort of like the Jolico with the Jokers, and you take a, a Lico, put them together, you make a Jolico, and you do get a nice, bright, controllable source. But now I have it in an LED. It's not hot, um, and I'm, I can use my HMIs elsewhere, my Jokers or whatever elsewhere for this. So it's, it's, it's a great fixture for hitting a true daylight white. Now the other thing you can do is you can also create other color profiles in here. You can create a green and drag it in. You can also come over and grab a red and drag that red down into your palette. You can come over and grab a blue and drag that blue into your palette. This light, although it is called a Daylight HD LED, it also has the other colors in here. However, I would say that it is deficit in the green. You're going to get a great blue out of it. You're going to get a rich, rich blue out of it. That rich blue that you're going to get is best if you sit at blue at 255, green at zero, and red at about 20. For some reason, there's a sweet spot in the blue if you wanted the richest blue you could get. You have to add a little bit of red to it. You can also get a dynamite red out of it. Uh, but when you do come up to green, this light is going to pretty much fail. You're not going to get like a forest green or or anything that's like a primary green out of this light. That's the only sort of downside to this to this light. Um, but other than that, I really like this light, and I also like how Luminaire deals with this light. It's simple, it's direct. Uh, I know it is just seems too simple because it's one fader and we like other controls, but I've been through a dozen other configurations with this light and Luminaire, and this is the easiest and the best way to, to use it in Luminaire.